War never changes. <coughs> Excuse me. That's clearly nonsense. Whoever said that doesn't know shit about war. Because war, we don't use swords anymore. We use guns and we shoot the bastards. Today, we're learning all about war through the amazing book, Spectrum Wargaming. This book taught me all there is to know about the dying game. And if we're good, Owen and Audrey Bishop, maybe they'll explain. This book covers a Napoleonic campaign, a World War II skirmish, a medieval battle, and a conflict in outer space. We're starting off with the first game, which is a hybrid war game. We're combining tabletop and computerised activity. We've got the cathode ray tube combined with the combat resolution table for CRT on CRT action. Ten, hot. The Spectrum goes to war. With these programmes and your Spectrum, you can fight a variety of campaigns. The book explains the principles of wargaming and contains a programming system for those who wish to invent their own wargames. Or you can just play it as is by typing it in. It supports both the cassette or the micro drive. The games involve a program which plays the wargame and a data file, which is the name of the game with a D on the end. You can create this data file in two ways. One is you type in a load of data statements, about four or four pages, run the program and it saves it to tape as a big array. That's called the direct way. There's also the programmer's way where you construct the tables in memory and then you convert those into the data. Well, that gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot more ability to change things. So we are going to be doing the programmer way and this program here is called Table Maker. Table Maker lets you define your combat resolution tables and other tables for the game and then convert that into a format the computer can understand. So we're starting off with a table which is going to be the weapons table. This is a table to choose what weapons are involved in the game. How many rows? So the rows are all about the range of the weapon. So that goes from 0 all the way to 21 plus then you want to know how many columns there are. There's one column per weapon, so you have four columns. Are the rows diced for? Do you throw dice to select which row you get? In this case, no, we don't, because we're going to be selecting the range ourselves. So say no. And I guess, is this correct? What table's called weapons, 12 rows, four columns. We've got headings. Is it right? Excellent. So now we get into the row headings. So here, it's the the range in hex, which is cross correlation with our weapons. So the first row is called zero hex, and row two is one hex, and so on and so forth until we get to the end. It stores these values inside the table and inside the games, so these are told to you so you get to choose. Now we have to enter the column headings. There are four weapons. The first is the revolver, the second being the rifle, Third being the LMG, the light machine gun, MG42 perhaps, or a Bren gun. The last being a medium machine gun, perhaps like the Vickers. How many entry codes? So the values put into the table are encoded. So we need to work out how many there are. So you, don't, so you don't just type in the values directly. You type in codes. So the table is um, displayed on the screen for your benefit. There are values from 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. So I believe that to be 14 different codes. You have to enter, there are 14 codes. There could be up to 48, which is an individual code for every entry. That is entirely possible. Or it could just be two codes. Because if it's one code, there's no point having a table. There are 14 codes. We are absolutely sure. Right, what is code number one? Then you have to cross correlate these. Because they're going up numeric order, we're starting off with 0, and then 5, 10, 15, 20. These are used as lookups when the game runs, eventually. And they are correct. And now we have to enter the code numbers. 
So the revolver, which is column one, row one, at a range of zero, has a 50% chance of hitting. So I put that in. That's just wrong because it's not a code number. That's a number number. So I have to calculate which code number it is. And I, obviously you write them down in advance. It's easier unless you're an idiot. But, so I know it's numbered nine. And then row two, I have zero, which is a, a range of one. The revolver has zero chance to hit. So that will be number one. And this is true for the revolver now. For anything above, anything with point blank range, you can't, you can't hit anything. So now we save that to tape. We save it as multiple files, multiple arrays, which is the name of the rows, name of the columns, and the data within. That's the weapons table done. The next table we're looking at is the fire phase table, which is a lot bigger. How many rows in the fire phase table? There are 19 rows. There are 19 rows. And how many columns? If there should be 14, I believe, which is the same as the codes in the weapons table. Are rows dice for? Yes, you throw dice to select which row you get. The top of the range is going to be 19, bottom of the range obviously being 1. Are there any modifiers applied? Yes, there will be modifiers applied to the table, which are applied at runtime when you play the game. So the fire phase table called fire faz, 19 rows, 14 columns. You select the row with dice. Is this correct? Yes, it is. And now you have to enter the actual values. The row headings are the just the numbers. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 19. And the entry codes, 2 to 266. So here we have to enter the codes. So there are seven codes, which is OK, panicked OK, panicked, wounded panicked, wounded, killed wounded, or KIA. Starting off with the worst KIA, everyone in the square is killed, or two people are killed. First killed, second wounded, both are wounded, first wounded, second is panicked, then two characters are panicked, then one is panicked, one is okay, and finally everyone's okay. So the better tables, for example, the 100% column, most of it is going to be killing, whereas the revolver is on the 50% row, which is somewhat more variable. Again, we save it to tape, which comes as multiple files. So if you've typed in all these tables you now need to use the data storer program in order to turn them into actual usable data because as you said you could type in a program that does it directly but then you cannot change anything you cannot modify things so what's the point of all this so the select spectrum was limited in terms of memory a number a single number could take up seven bytes so number one will be seven bytes and that is incredibly wasteful when it comes to wargaming, which could have multiple units, multiple sides, lots of tables, and that sort of thing. So the way the Spectrum Wargaming engine works, it stores the data as either individual bytes directly in memory, accessed via peek and poke, or even better, as individual bits within an entry. So the way it manages this, it loads the tables into the data manager program, it says, what table do you want to load? So we've got 9804 bytes available. What is the name of the first table? Here it was going to be the weapons table, which obviously involved the ranges and the uh, modifiers. So it's now going to look for the five bits of data that make up the table, which are, there'll be a couple of st uh, string arrays and various data arrays. The reason it loads these is these this data contains the number of rows, the number of columns, how much space each thing needs, and so on and so forth. So it's all entirely relocatable. So even though it's stored in memory at a certain address, the addresses are then offsetable because it knows, oh, table one is this many bytes long, table two therefore starts somewhere else. So there'll be five different parts of the weapons table. And although the weapons table itself is exists for the World War II game, you could have different different tables for different games. So once you've typed in the table manager and the data storer, you don't need to type them in again. So it's now loaded the five arrays. It's now going to construct the table into memory. As yes, that's now done, are there any more tables? Yes, there are. You have to build a number of tables for the war game, the first war game bridge to work. The weapons table, the fire phase table, which determines the effects of the weapons. Again, both all the programs support either the cassette tape or microdrive. Microdrive is faster. In real life, microdrives were unfortunately unreliable. 
although they could be very fast and let you actually erase file names and so on and so forth. Because some, you know, some values, for example, uh, say the file phase table, you've got seven codes. So you can fit that into three bits if necessary, rather than a single number. When you've got stuff like moving into armies with later on, like, you know, is, is it standing up? Is it sitting down? Is it dead? Has it moved yet? These are all really small values and it'll be really inefficient to store these as not your standard basic variables. So if you typed it in yourself, you'd be typing in three dense pages of data statements. So we've now stored the fire phase table. The third table we're going to be looking at is the grenades table. Essentially you throw a dice for grenades and it tells you the effect it has, as you would imagine. Grenades, is about, great, grenades table is a lot simpler. There are only uh, two columns and it's it's dice for essentially a very close range. You would like to kill people at longer range. You might wound them if you're lucky. But I'll certainly put the wind up them. The difference between grenades and other weapons is grenades affect everybody in the hex. You can stack characters. You can have four characters, four characters in one space. Normal fire only affects the first two units there, but grenades affect everybody. So with a lucky dice roll, you could kill four units at once. There are a lot less modifiers also for grenades, and you are penalised as a target for being in a building. You can also use grenades outside line of sight. So the other advantage of the data store is the data is a lot more compact than all that far. Imagine having to load all these tables just for one game. So the data file is actually a lot smaller. The final table is the close combat table, which is a very simple table. It's got six rows and nine columns. And that's based on the ratio between the attacker and the defender. Now we store it into data. There's also a program called Edit Data, which allows you to edit these data files without having to go back to create the entire table. Are there any more tables? Not this time. Is there an army? In part two, we'll be looking at both armies and maps as the game will move on to an entirely computerized game. So I need to tell you the name of the game, which is Bridge. The data file will be Bridge with a D at the end. We now save this to tape, and then we are ready to play The Bridge. So this is the setup for the bridge. The objective of the game is for the Germans to advance from the east to capture this bridge here by controlling the large building here. The objective of the Allies is to stop it. While the game is loading, we shall set the pieces up. This is a German captain who is armed with a revolver. The Germans start anywhere on the three columns on the extreme right-hand side. There are sappers and private sappers carry demolition charges because if the germans cannot capture the bridge within 10 turns they are instructed to demolish it and then return to the east to rejoin their regiment the allies of course have to stop them these are various characters these are privates private and the privates are of three different qualities there are veterans and there are new recruits, and there are some in between. This uh, dotted area represents woodland. The dash dashed lines are contour lines, because most of the German pieces are armed with rifles, and, also, and some also carry grenades. The captain, however, is only armed with a revolver. Revolvers aren't pretty good. The Germans also come with six light machine guns, which they can carry. The sappers cannot carry them. They don't give you any movement penalty, but they do give you an advantage to attack. Then you've got the allies, who have privates. They start in this area here, bounded by the road and the river. So we're going to start with people in cover, various types of private, anywhere in the woods. As long as we're within the spaces here. You can stack. The Germans have 26 pieces and six light machine guns. The Allies have a lot less, but they do start in defensive position. It's not looking so good for the Allies. That's a British corporal who starts he's to start up on this hill in the woods. We'll have a private on the road guard and the bridge. And I'll give that private a medium machine gun. You see, Allies have one. Bob. Then you have four. French resistance pieces, who can move quicker. And actually quite good shots. Two, three, and four. So, 
The game now tells us it's turn one, German troops advance. German troops have six movement points. Moving along the road, you get to move one, two, three, four, five, six. I get to move into the open. Two, three, four, five, six. Because open costs two. Two, four, six. Two, four, six. There are lots of Germans, aren't there? I've not moved these guys yet. Two, four, six. Two, four, six. Two, four, six. Two, four, six. Oh dear. It's not good for the Allies, is it? Two, four, six. Two, four, six. Two, four, six. Round the hill. Two, four, six. Two, four, six. And then we say, go forward, which is up K. So this next turn is now the German fire or advance phase. You mean either fire or move. So as there's no one in range, we're going to keep charging along the road. So the computer is working as the referee at this stage and nothing more, just telling us what turns. And his weapon says forward is skipped. You haven't got any, we're not firing anything, which is K. German troops have got any grenades? No, no grenades. And forward is skip. Any close combat? No close combat. And skip. And skip. Phase one, allied troops advance. This is just movement. The French resistance are going to go first. They get to move eight spaces. Going downhill doesn't cost more. So it's two, four, six, eight. That's a road. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six. In the rules, these have better movement because they have local knowledge. This guy is in the open. So he's going to go two, four, five, six. He's in the woods. This guy is going to go two, four, five, six, and stop. And forward, fire or advance. So we go back to say we're ready. This guy's got a rifle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's going he's to shoot at that guy at the front. So back means ready. Back is down, which is M. M is ready to fire. So he says, what do you want to use? I'm going to use the, the rifle. And you select with space. You can also know what range you've got. Are there any modifiers? There could be modifiers, you see. So this guy is a rubbish shot, so he gets a plus four modifier, which is bad. So we move this down and set the plus four modifier. And then you set zero to finish. Resolving combat. So, a rifle, a range of nine, there's a 5% chance. And basically, I've missed. And that's the only shot we've got. So when I go forward with K, any grenades, no, do grenades after firing. No close combat. On to turn two for the Germans. So, back on the road. He's got armed with a light machine gun. So he's going to go... One, two, three, four, five, six, and stop. The German captain to go into the house and stop. He doesn't want to get shot. Corporal, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now into firing. So this guy at the front is going to shoot at that private there. Him there to go back, which is M, which is ready. We're firing, and he's going to use his light machine gun, which is sold for some MG42. And it's at a range of three. So we're going to set the light machine gun. And it is a range of one, two, three. It could be zero hex because the, the captain can use his revolver in close combat. It's a range of three. There's other any modifiers. So this particular German is an average shot. So he gets a penalty of plus two. Penalties are a bit backwards, but it works. That's selected. Then we go to zero to finish. Resolving combat. We're shooting at a British private standing in the middle of the road. And he is W slash P. So the first unit in the square is wounded. The so any others, the second is panicked. He lies on his side. He's got shot. That's not so good for Tommy. And that's all we've got at this stage. So we're going to move forward with K. German troops fire all grenades. He's already fired, so you can't use a grenade. And let's move forward. And no, no, there is no close combat. And 
hand. We've got Stecco advanced through, but never mind. We're being more cautious. On to the Allies. So the French resistance. Two, four, six, eight. One, three, five, seven. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't fall over. He's wounded. So if you're wounded, you can still move, except you have a penalty for movement. So you're going to move four spaces. So he's going to retreat. He can go two and four. And this guy is going to move into the building here, which is one, two, three. And he's going to stay put. And we're going to stop here. Next, it is fire of advance. So you can advance if you want to. Let's go two, four, six, eight. French resistance are duck around this hill and cycle down the road. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we're going to do some shooting, which is going back, which is, is M. Right. Let's do some shooting. So this guy who is wounded is going to shoot at that guy. He's got a rifle. So we're going to set the rifle. This looks at the rifle, the weapon's effectiveness, which is then cross-correlated with the range, which is one, two, three, range of four. So I've retreated. And ask, are there any modifiers? Yes, there are. I'm wounded, so that's plus two. I'm also a rubbish shot, so that's plus four. So you apply the plus two modifier first, and then the plus four modifier. And then that's it. Resolving combat. And I've missed. That's the Germans again. So this time he's going to charge on the road again. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sappers each carry a demolition charge, which is used like a grenade, but you attack the bridge. The back is ready, which is M. And we fire to advance. So if you want to use weapons, you have to select M. So this guy is going to shoot that guy. He's, so I'm going to select back, who's ready. I'm going to use a light machine gun, MG42. It's at a range of one hex. So are there any modifiers? Well, I have got a shooting power of two, which is a little bit rubbish. So it's plus two. It's a penalty on the dice rolls, and that's it. However, it's a, it's a light machine gun at an extremely close range, and light machine guns are very, very good. The only one better was the medium machine gun, which at a range of one is a 100% hit rate. So, pan. So, I've not done very particularly well there. That guy's panicked. So, if we face him the other way, that means he can't move next turn. So, we've also got this corporal here attacking the French resistance. So we go back, he's ready. Uh, grenades, okay then. Uh, so the corporal with his grenade is going to throw a grenade at the French resistance, which is ready, which is back. No, range of one. And there's no modifiers because the French resistance are not in cover. So set zero to finish. And the French resistance guy, the Maquis, what happens to him? He throws the cat dice. It's, if you're inside a building, you're better protected against uh, small arms fire, but you're more at risk. He's panicked. So that's no good. He faces away. So he's, he's got the wind up. And then we go forward onto the Allies. Turn three, phase one. Allied troops advance. He's panicked. We can't move. That recovers for the uh, next move. But he, French resistance man, is going to go one. So that's two, four, six onto the same square. Right. And that's back is ready. Far advanced weapon. So I'm ready. I want to shoot. So I'm going to go back is ready. So this guy, actually the French resistor, he's here. That's close combat. He's panicked. This guy is a private, a good shot with a rifle, shooting at this corporal. So it's private with a range of three, but with a rifle. Rifle. Range of three. There are no modifiers, because I'm actually a rather good shot. And let's see if I can hit the side of a barn. He's wounded. Wounded soldiers are put on their side. They cannot carry a 
extra weapon, but they can fire it. So the light machine gun will have to stay in that square. So we, we, we can actually capture it later on if we do well. So, back is ready. I want to do another... Oh, left is repeat. To do it again, you have to press left, which is Z, for another shot. So, there's a guy next to him in the woods, which who is also armed with a rifle. And we're going to go one, two, so he's got a range of four with a rifle. So we set zero modifiers. And he's wounded. Because because he's already wounded, he is now dead. We have now killed one of the Germans. Vive la France, as we say. In cover. He's wounded. He's wounded. So he can sh he can shoot. So we're going to repeat. This guy's going to shoot that guy. I don't think he's already fired yet. With a rifle. It's a range of one. He's wounded, which is a plus two modifier. Plus, he's, he's not a great shot. So that's plus two and plus four. That's four. Plus two. Kill. That's a K. We have killed him. One shot. One kill. Give me his June. That's two, that's two Germans now. Only another 24 to go. So that is how the game works. The computer handles the uh, telling what turn it is, handles, handles firing, handles grenades, and that's as far as it goes. So this is the first stage in computer wargaming. I shall be coming back to this because there is a second version of this game which is entirely computerised. Thank you for watching.